Hey, I'm Paul Mark, owner of Transcend Coffee, and this is Chad Moss, Hi. roaster and uh, espresso specialist for Transcend. Transcend Coffee is a small little micro roaster here in Edmonton, Alberta, and we uh, specialize in trying to source the best quality green that we can so that we can roast an amazing coffee for you, our customers. We also have a small espresso bar that we're, where we provide uh, the highest quality in terms of espresso and lattes and clover coffee. Um, in our search for quality this spring, we actually visited Central America and we were, we were in El Salvador and, and uh, Costa Rica and Panama. In our travels, we visited a farm called San Limitus, uh, run by a, an operator whose name is Jaime. And uh, we were really intrigued and impressed with the quality of his coffee. Uh, when while we were there, actually, we experienced some pretty crazy weather, uh, the weather that was just uncharacteristic for that time of year. And in the process of that sort of mini hurricane hitting Panama and Costa Rica, Jaime's, uh, some of Jaime's production facility was completely destroyed by high winds. And so uh, knowing that, Chad wanted to do something about, about that situation. So hey, mm. tell me a little bit about what, what happened. You have to only take one look at Jaime's operation and see that there's no magic behind what they do. It's just raw, hard work. So when I discovered that his infrastructure was damaged to the point of compromising the, the coffee that he was just taking so much care of, I felt obligated to do something, anything that I could to compensate him for what was otherwise something out of his control. Just yeah, just to put the damage into context, we had when we were in Panama this spring, we had 100 mile an hour winds. It was raining like crazy during harvest season where it's not supposed to rain. Really freakish weather, and it was knocking trees down all over the place and stripping coffee fields of their leaves. It wasn't as bad in Costa Rica as it was in Panama, but Jaime dries his coffee inside of a almost like a greenhouse structure, and it just creates more stability for air temperature and it creates faster drying times and he basically lost that entire structure it just took off in the wind and um, the damage was I think around a thousand dollars I think that's what we were told about a thousand dollars US and a thousand dollars doesn't sound like much to us but for those guys a thousand bucks is a huge huge whack of cash so we were really excited about what Jaime was doing and when we saw his, his operation it was it was clear that he really cared about the quality of, of the product. He's only been doing coffee for three years. It's a very small operation, just he and his wife and one other person that works for them. And uh, right off the bat, they were doing quality to the extent that they, I think he won Cup of Excellence the first year he was first out. First time there, yeah. And he took all the money that he made in Cup of Excellence and he reinvested into his farm and, and he's been just pouring his life into this, this, this farm. So we're excited about bringing his coffee and not just because of what he does, but because of the quality of the coffee. And, mm -hmm. and we know you're gonna like it too when we finally get it, get it here in about a month or so. Um, so Chad, why don't you talk to us a little bit about what happened on Friday night with the Slow Food Benefit Tasting? Sure, well, um, what we decided to do is uh, monthly we hold a public coffee tasting where we invite guests in and show them coffees from around the world. We do a roast, we do a profile cupping. So for the Slow Food Edmonton group, we decided to do a Sin Limitus coffee tasting. As part of Slow Food, we want to know where our product comes from and given the fact that we can't get green we can't grow coffee here in Canada. The next best thing is to know where our coffee is coming from. So giving our Slow Food members the opportunity to meet the producer, meet the person who just slaved over this coffee, um, let them understand how it comes to be in their percolator in the morning or their brewer uh, was very important for them and the connection was really made with uh, Sin Limitus. Cool. And James Schutz, our marketing director, had put together a video. I, when I was over there, we, we shot a lot of video, and mm -hmm. uh, he put together a little video that you showed showed the group that mm -hmm. sort of articulated some of the, the processes that Jaime goes through in terms of preparing the coffee. How did people mm -hmm. react to that? They had so many questions. Um, they were really impressed to see that they actually hand sort all the coffee. Mm -hmm. um, I told them the story of Jaime taking off his shoes to rake 
the coffee and parchment, which I mean, it's just and then how he he didn't he didn't scold us, but he wanted to make sure that we didn't mix up any coffee from lot to lot, and mm -hmm. everything was neatly laid out on his patio, and you could just tell that he just took so much care mm -hmm. in his product, and and that video helped um, show our slow food members that. Jaime loves this product so much that we owe it to him to highlight it the best way we know how. Yeah, that's that's really part of what we do at Transcend, or what we're striving for, is we're striving to find that perfect sweet spot with every coffee that we bring in. And, and we roast it to the place that we think it's best highlighted, where the, it's best accentuated in terms of its unique characteristics. We really treat coffee like wine for the most part, and we, we want to celebrate the terroir of the place where the coffee comes from. And so it's one of the main reasons why we don't roast anything real dark. Um, and because typically when we roast something dark, uh, you taste the, the, the roast characteristics, heavy caramelization and some charcoal and sort of that dark flavor, but it doesn't really do anything for the coffee. Did did the video or, or the evening sort of give people pause when you, when they did the tasting? Because that's something that was part of the evening. Well, you know what's funny is that um, when the members of the group had the opportunity to meet Jaime on the video, understand how hard he works, um, they could step away from what they were told to like by another coffee company or what they usually drink, and they all opted to roast that coffee to where it's going to highlight Jaime's hard work. And it was very gratifying for me as a roaster that's striving to do that as well. I didn't have to beg him or I didn't have to lead him in any way. They just they just knew that he deserved that that roast profile. Cool. And that's, I think, really a good, a good example of what we're trying to do with every coffee that we bring in. We, we don't have the ability at this point, obviously, to, to visit every farm that we buy coffee from. And ideally, we bring every, every grower to Edmonton so that our customers can meet them firsthand and, and meet producers. And that's probably something we're going to do in the near future anyways. But I think it's why we work as hard as we do at trying to figure out how to roast coffee and how to celebrate, why we don't take things dark. And ultimately, for you, it means a better cup of coffee. It means that it tastes better. You might not always like everything you try at Transcend, but the beauty of it is that you get to try some variety. Not everything's going to taste the same, um, and it's 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 what makes coffee exciting for us is is the difference. The a Yerba Chef versus uh, a Bourbon, they're totally different flavor profiles, and it's what makes coffee exciting for us. So I think that's it for today. Um, if you need to ask us some questions, drop by the shop, 9869 62nd Ave, Edmonton, Alberta, or you can visit us anytime on the web at uh, www.transcendcoffee.com. So for now, I'm Paul Mark signing out. I'm Chad. See ya. See you later.